But good morning, Mavuno Church downtown. Ay, 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 ay. Good morning once again. Do you know it's how many days to Christmas? 15 days. Hey, can you see someone who has a countdown <laughs> waiting for the day? They'll say, hey, happy, Merry Christmas. Um, but when you're looking at this Christmas season and you're trying to, I know people are preparing, they've bought, they've made their tree. Rick, have you done your tree? Not yet. Not yet. After last Sunday, 20th, you, you've done your tree. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I can't wait to come and visit you. How many else have their Christmas tree up already? Oh, yes, Shaggy and Lauren and Memba. Oh, wow. We have a number of people. But there's a season, it's a season where you also tend to spend a lot. Uh, you want to buy gifts, you want to buy uh, uh, the Christmas decoration, your lights, decorations, and what have you. But when you also look at the economy, you wonder, hey, do we buy gifts? Do we buy... Uh, CBC school fees next <laughs> for January. Um, but the economy has really changed over the years. And if you look back, um, even a thousand shilling note has really changed. It's really the, because of inflation, the value has really gone down. So those who know me, I love shopping with kiodos. Like me, I have like three or five kiodos. I always go super, supermarket shopping. And those ones where I just want to be me, myself and I, husband stay, and children stay at home. I go to the supermarkets on all the aisles. Yes, retail, it's a, in a prayer walk, as Riga said last time. Um, and over the years since I've done this, the number of baskets that I usually go home with have really reduced. And you're wondering, hey, this world, what is it coming to? When you look at your paycheck over the months, it keeps going lower and lower because of the taxes, backdated taxes. Uh, but the, you always tend to buy during this season. So I want to ask you this question. So you turn to your neighbor, to the right or your left, or the front and the back, depending on where you are, and answer this question. What is one thing that you cannot miss in your December Christmas list? What is one thing that you cannot miss out on your December Christmas list? Ah. <laughs> Yeah, so there's always chapati and chicken. That's my like favorite combination. Uh, like Pastor Faith, it's for Christmas tree and decorations and lights. Um, people like you, like new clothes. Nguya Christmas lasma uvai, lasma nunue. Then you remember this was Christmas for 2020, 2013, 20 this. Um, but yeah, so I want to invite you to consider some of the gifts when you're coming to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this Christmas. And last Sunday, Pastor Riga, the prophet, hey. Nabi, hey. <laughs> took us through the first installment of a wise mentality. Yes, gifts fit for a king. And we talked about three things. Now we see who, was, was in, who, did, who watched and who was there. What were the three people we talked about? And their three responses. Herod, his, the scribes. And wise men. Now, I'll stop looking at this, the first row. I'll look behind. For, opposition was for who? Herod. King Herod. And the second one was the scribes? Indifference. Indifference. And the wise man was? Worship. Worship. Wow. Yes. Hey, hey, Riga. They listened. They listened. Good job. Good job. And we saw that our primary uh, gift that we should give is our lives. Um, and it's an act of worship. And today we'll just be going further into the story of, of this Christmas. And if you've not watched, please go to our YouTube page, Mavuno Church Downtown. You'll find those there. They've been recorded, they've been edited, and be posted. I wonder whose child that is. <laughs> um, yes, just for you to go and listen to it. Uh, and today I want us now to continue from there. After the wise men came, they worshipped, and they gave gifts. So we look at Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. And now, because we will read together, right? Yep. All right. So Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. Let's go. And when they had come into the house, they saw a young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented to him gold, <laughs> frankincense, and myrrh. Yes. So for, I liked what Pastor Kendi said during worship. 
is they had a revelation of who this baby is. He was not just a child. He was the king of kings and the lord of lords. And their first reaction was they'd come, they bowed down, and they worshipped him. And they just just leave it there. They went further and brought their gifts to him, which was the gold, the frankincense, and myrrh. And throughout the next uh, weeks, we'll be covering these three different um, gifts that they, they brought. So today we're going to look at gold. Yeah, and we're going to look at it at, in a very practical way, a very tangible way. So gold is, as you can see, one day I want to hold gold in my life because... Just, just me, my gold ring here. But I want like a whole block to be held. So it's a chemical element that is bright, that is yellow, that is solid in, in room temperature. And it's very um, highly valuable. And it has been done this over the years. If you have gold as a country or a kingdom, you're able to take over things, you're able to develop faster. Um, and it shows the more gold that you have, it shows the more how stable your economy is. And, and for the wise men, for them to have brought these gifts, it was an appropriate gift just because they saw um, baby Jesus as the king of kings. And this thing was noted, the gold was associated with kings and with monarchs. And they also acknowledged that it was a right to reign. So baby Jesus had the right to rule and to reign over us. And they also had, um, they knew that Jesus was an eternal and immortal, invincible king. And the second thing is we see it in scriptures of what gold is. Gold is associated with his divinity, um, with his, um, um, and Jesus was, was fully man and was fully God. And he, he was a message from Jesus, from God to us. And today I want us to look at four things on how we can be able to give a wise gift, to have the wise mentality just as the wise men did. So are you ready for these four things? Are you ready? I can only hear faith. Come on now. So the, the first thing that we'll talk about is our faith. And from, from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse, chapter 1, verse 7 says, ready? Go. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, honor. Yes. Um, so for faith, for gold to, for you to test if gold is genuine, um, what do you do? You have to burn it. And you burn it at a high temperature. And, and uh, when Peter was talking about this, he had to liken faith to gold. When gold is burnt, it, it, is, it goes through a process of being refined, re, um, uh, purified, and made better over. And the same thing that happens to our faith. Um, in our lives, we go through fiery situations. Um, if I would take a mic around everyone, this year you have gone through a fiery experience. Um, but having the faith of God allows you to say, even if this is a situation I've gone through, I have the faith to trust God, to believe God. And faith is believing God at his word, without wavering, without questioning, without um, uh, having any doubts of what he says. Believing what God says, despite the situation around you. When you look around and say your marriage is not working, you know God, you're like, God, this is your son or this is your daughter, I will still believe you. There's something that will change. Whether you've lost a job um, and you're wondering how you're going to survive through a month or years, you know that God still is your provider. When you've had a family member who's sick um, over and over, but you still know that God is, has been your healer. When you talk about <laughs> this thing of ease and acceleration, you're like, I've not experienced any ease and acceleration this year. But you just know that God is the one who makes that way for you. And this is what is golden to God. Even through these fiery situations, that you can come back and say that God is faithful. God is the one for you. God is the one that you'll hold on to. As Pastor Kilonzi say with Mikono Wili, with two hands, that you'll hold on to him despite what is happening. And even that verse says that all praise, glory, and honor will go to God. Amen. So what, what, when you've gone through these seasons of, of fiery um, situations and trials, um, do you say that God is, has been good to you? Would you still say God has been faithful to you? 
And that is what he's asking of you this season, that your faith is golden to him. Your faith is what will push you through the next season, is what he'll teach you go to go to move from glory to glory. And I have a question for you, even as we ponder um, through our faith. And my question is, what fiery situation broke your faith instead of allowing you to refine your faith? And I want you to actually take out your phone if you have a, uh, or a piece of paper and just go later on and ask yourself this question. The question will be, will be there on the screen. What fiery situation broke your faith instead of allowing you to refine your faith? All right, so the first one was our faith, yes. Um, and the second thing is our finances, which is golden. This is something that you can give of God, which is your finances. So in this December season, there's a tendency of numbers just going down, attendance in church going down. Um, in the MK space, I think is where you, you feel it. You go to a class and you have one, two children, um, where uh, the, even the seats in the adult service are empty. So what happens when the services uh, attendance go down is also our giving goes down. And what um, that happens is that people tend to think of Christmas season for spending, uh, want to buy those uh, new clothes, uh, make sure we have more unga for chapo, we have the chicken ready for us, uh, Christmas trees and decorations are up. But also you look at your next year and you think you have school fees to pay. Uh, January has like 100 days in it and you wonder how you're going to survive. But there's a way that you tend to hold on to what God does for you and you not be generous with the gifts that you've been given. And God tells us, God tells the children of Israel in the book of Malachi is to return to him what they have taken. And that when he was talking about this, he, didn't, he was not talking about um, they need to fast more, uh, they need to pray more, they need to uh, spend time in, in fellowship. But what he was saying is that they need to return to what is his, which meaning that they need to be faithful with their gifts and their tithes and their offerings. So when you're faithful with your gifts and tithes and offering, there's something that happens to you in the book of Malachi. Is God explains that he rebukes the devourer on your behalf. Uh, but when you don't pay your tithes as a fast thing or not at all, that covering is removed that protection is removed, and the devourer comes to steal, kill, and de destroy. You have to, expenses that you can't understand. Well, you have a random flat tire in the middle of somewhere, or your car breaks down, or the fridge doesn't work. Just you tend to um, expose yourself to the enemy and how he's able to come into your finances, and you end up spending a lot. But when you tithe and you'll be faithful for, with what you, God has told you to give, he's able to cover you. He gives a covering over it. And, and these things don't happen. You, God manages to, manages to take care of the things because you've taken care of God's things. And even we see uh, the same thing happens when the wise men gave this gold to Jesus. It's what they used when, when Joseph and his family had to move. And we see that even in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, verse 13, that says, when the angel of God appeared to Joseph and told him that he needs to take his family out uh, into Egypt. That's what the family survived on. They, they were able to move about even with the resources that were given to them. And that's the same thing that happens. When we give of, of our tithe and offering, the word of God is able to be sent out. The same thing that um, Pastor Kilonzi and, the, and Sule were saying, when, we, when the church gave someone in Kitale, there were 50 salvations. 90 people came to church. We had people, um, this is now the second service, because of the giving of your tithes and offering, offerings, God is able to be sent out into the world to visit. And that's why I'm always, I've, I've really come to love our vision as a movement, is to plant a culture-defining um, churches in every capital city of Africa and gateway city of the world. That's the only way uh, that happens, is through our giving. So my question for you today, when you're thinking about your finances, this golden thing that uh, Christ has asked of you. My question is, what do you need to adjust in your life so that you can grow in your generosity towards God? What do you need to adjust in your life so that you can grow in your generosity to God? So we've done faith, we've done finances, and the third F that is golden to the king is our fellowship. 
Um, and fellowship is now us being here, us being the church. Um, and where people are, there will always be issue. There's a guarantee there's going to be an issue. Whether you're pres- either you and I in a, in a room, there's going to be an issue. But God um, tells us that, he, that Jesus is among us, that he came to seek and save the lost. He came to heal us. He came to be among us. And in Revelation chapter 1, 12 to 13, that says, I turned around to see the voice that's speaking to me. And I turned and saw the seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands, when someone like a son of man dressed in a robe, reaching down his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. So these seven lampstands are talking about the churches, the seven churches. Um, I know when you hear revelations, you're thinking, hey, we'll talk about dragons and things coming out. And today we are reading Revelation 1. So I don't know how far you are in the Bible reading app. I'm not looking at anyone particular. Uh, but yes, we are reading Revelation chapter 1. So if you go there, you'll be able to see how Jesus was among these seven lampstands. He was among the people. Uh, but there's a tendency when you're going through a season in life, you withdraw from church. Church is the first thing that you step away from. Um, and people do different things, whether they either go to the club or go back to their hole. And the enemy loves isolation. He will withdraw you from where Jesus is. But this is where he is. This is where you're able to find your solution to any problem that you have. Jesus is the answer to everything. Um, and this is what is golden, our fellowship with one another. It's the same way when you're, if you have older children and they've traveled and then they're coming back to the Christmas holiday, it's always nice to have them, even if they are fighting and they are quarreling. There's a way that having, being within family, um, you enjoy being that space. The same way that God is calling us to come into his presence, to come where he is, enjoy, and, and enjoy being among him. And my question for you today is, um, even as you think about your fellowship, how have you withdrawn um, from the spaces of God? My reflection question is, who among you Who around you do you need to invite into a fellowship spaces? So who among you, who who around you do you need to invite into your fellowship spaces? So we've talked about our faith, our finances, and the third one was our fellowship. And the fourth one today is our fruitfulness. And there's a, when you build something, it's, it's good to build on the foundation of Christ. Um, and I really love how the Bible talks about building of two different things. So the Bible talks about how God gave Moses instruction on how to build a tabernacle. And then Sol- Solomon Akajituma, he sent himself to say, I am going to build the temple. And that the, how God did, how God instructed um, Solomon, Moses to build the tabernacle was very specific. He told him the wood to use, um, what type of gold, what type of color, the fabric. Like he was very detailed in how um, he was given these instructions. And, this, and, the, and for Solomon, he went out to get these things. He wanted the best for Christ. He wanted the best. But it ended up bringing a split into the kingdom of Israel. But how you build in Christ determines what fruitfulness you will have. Um, And in 1 Corinthians 3, 11 to 13, it says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or, or, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is. That is a fruitfulness. Because the day will bring it to light and it, and it will reveal with fire it revealed with fire and the fire will test the qualities of each person's work so what are you building are you building um, your schoolwork are you building your project are you building your family how are you building your marriage how are you building your finances how are you building yourself even with the skills that you want to grow in how are you building your children how are you building your team in your workspace how are you building your business Is it how God has instructed you? Do you go back to him and seek uh, uh, the vision, the quality, the the work that he wants you to do? 
so that you can so that he can get the glory do you build for your own self or do you build for the glory of god and i really love this verse for exodus 25:40 it says as you see to it that you make them according to the patterns which i have shown you on the mountain this was what moses was being told by god he gave him all the instructions and the last verse of that chapter says have you built how God has told you to build? Just remember these things. And for you to remember, you need to have gone to his presence and said that this is the instruction that you want to. This is the instruction of how you want to build your family or your finances or your, or your businesses. So for me, my question for you today is, is what you're building in God's purpose and design? Did he concept it? Did he give you the materials? Did he give you the design? So how are you building in God's... Is what you're building in God's pattern? That's a fourth question for you. Is what you're building in God's pattern? And even when you're hearing this, you're like, hey, um, that's nice. The, 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 the faith, the fruitfulness, the finances, the fellowship. Like I'm hearing you uh, but it, what, your, what the situation that you're currently in is not what it looks like. And you're wondering, what, what does God need these things? Does he need it? Just imagine he doesn't need um, your faith, doesn't need your finances, doesn't need your fellowship. He, open, he makes an invitation for you to come into this space so that he can, because he knows what's good for you. He knows what happens when your faith is built on Christ. When your faith is built on that solid foundation, he knows what happens. You're so that you're able to experience any storm and still stand firm. He knows what happens when you use your finances the right way, when you give generously, when you're faithful with your tithes and your giving, when you're radical with your generosity. He knows what happens to you. He knows what happens when your, fa your finances are mastering you. He knows what happens when you're not in fellowship with, your, with his people. When you're withdrawn um, and the devil has taken you into an isolated place, he knows what happens to you. He knows what happens when you, when you build the right way, when you build um, the things that God has instructed you the, in his way. Because he, has the, he, has, he looks not just for now, but in the light of eternity. And when you're hearing me, you're like, hey, this is overwhelming. This is, um, this is too much. My faith is not as it is. You look at the year and you've had so many problems come your way and you've just given up all the, along the way. Or you have finances and you're wondering, you've not been faithful, or I don't even have the finances that you're asking me to, to give of. Or when you look at your fruitfulness and, you, and you, you have no fruit of what you have done, or the fruit that's there is not as the quality that you have desired. Or when you look at the fellowship, you've had so many problems with your DG. You're wondering, I don't want to be in that space anymore. Or you've been hurt before and you're like, I don't want to be in that space before. But I just want to let you know that that gold, that golden thing of your faith, your finances, your fellowship, and, and your fruitfulness is found in God. It is found in Christ. In Haggai 2.8 says, The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord. You can only get these things through Christ because they are for Christ. When you think about the, the, the different season and the different things that we've spoken about today, and you're wondering, I don't even have these things. Uh, they're not within me. God is telling you that you can go to him, and he's, it's, he's able to give that to you. He's able to give you that faith that is built on him. He's able to give you the, the resources or the finances that you desire, the fruitfulness that you desire, the fellowship among his people where he is, is what you desire. You can find that through him. Gold is not just fit for Jesus. It is available through Jesus. So I want to tell your neighbor that gold is not just fit for Jesus. It is available through Jesus. Yeah. So I'm wondering, what have you heard from those four things? God is able to give you these things so that he can return them to you so you are able to be built. So even when you go through those fiery situations, you come out stronger, you come out um, better, and all glory, praise, and honor goes to him. Even I invite Pastor Kilonzi to just come and pray for us. I just want you to think through those questions. Think through those questions that we've talk and, talked about today.